Believe it or not, but Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain has just celebrated its 5 year anniversary. Released in the early-ish days of the PlayStation 4, a whole 7 years after the last mainline game Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots, it can't be understated just how avidly anticipated this fifth game was by fans. Much has of course been written about writer-director Hideo Kojima's acrimonious relationship with Konami during MGS 5's strained development, but what about those lesser known and less miserable tidbits and anecdotes surrounding the game's creation? With the dust well and truly settled in the five years since its release, these fascinating factoids confirm just how colossal of an undertaking the game really was. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 20 things you didn't know about Metal Gear Solid 5: The Phantom Pain. Number 20, Kiefer Sutherland has just 22 minutes of dialogue in the game. Kiefer Sutherland's casting as Big Boss proved hugely divisive with fans, who were of course expecting regular Solid Snake slash Big Boss voice actor David Hayter to return. Hideo Kojima's recast rationale was that he wanted an actor who could perform a full range of performance beyond voice acting, and so opted for a card-carrying Hollywood star instead. Curiously though, despite being the far more prominent actor in the game, Sutherland actually has the least lines of any of the game's major characters, save only for the mostly mute quiet. All in all, Sutherland's recorded lines in the final game amount to just 22 minutes of spoken dialogue, which is obviously a far cry from Hater's more extensive wordy work in the previous games. Number 19, it cost $80 million to make. It probably won't surprise you to learn that Metal Gear Solid V is one of the most expensive video games of all time, with its pure production costs running in at a hefty $80 million. It's incredibly rare for single player centric titles to ring up this sort of price tag outside of the likes of Rockstar Games, and once you cross the $100 million threshold, it's generally only multiplayer focused shooters like Call of Duty and Battlefield, as well as large scale MMORPGs. Much has been written in the years since MGS5's release that Konami was concerned about the game's ballooning costs, though considering that it went on to gross $179 million on its release day alone and shipped 6 million copies before the end of 2015, it was certainly a worthwhile investment. Number 18, a skull face boss fight was cut. Many fans were disappointed about MGS5's lack of the series' signature boss fights, and in the case of the villainous Skullface, players didn't even end up battling him at all. However, eager fans who datamined the game upon release found additional Skullface dialogue, which seemed to confirm that players were originally supposed to have a mano a mano battle with him. As for why the boss fight was cut, well, Kojima stated in the game's collector's edition guide that he wanted players to feel the phantom pain of Skullface being absent for so much of the game, right up to depriving them of a traditional fight against the antagonist. Number 17, the Phantom Pain is over 200 times larger than Ground Zeroes. While it's no secret that the Ground Zeroes prologue, released almost 18 months before the Phantom Pain finally hit stores, was a pretty piecemeal tease for the final game, it might surprise you to learn just how damn small it really is. Kojima confirmed before the Phantom Pain's release that its map is a whole 200 times larger than Ground Zeroes' enclosed sandbox environment. As for precise measurements, the Phantom Pain's expansive map is 2.48 miles by 2.48 miles, creating a total of 6.18 square miles overall. Number 16, Chico originally survived the helicopter crash. The character of Chico meets a most unpleasant fate at the end of Ground Zeroes, being killed in the helicopter explosion which also takes the life of Paz and effectively results in the Phantom Pain's big boss slash Venom Snake switcheroo. But as revealed in concept art, Chico was originally supposed to survive that helicopter crash and reappear in the Phantom Pain as an adult. Chico was set to re-emerge as a far cry from his former self donning a red robe, a face mask to cover his grotesque injuries from the crash, and carry around a machete for good measure. Number 15, James Horan recorded Skullface's lines in a couple of hours. Many fans were disappointed by Skullface's surprisingly piecemeal role in The Phantom Pain, with his screen time clocking in at only around 30 minutes. Skullface voice actor James Horan has also spoken about how minimal his involvement with the game actually was, despite Skullface being such a prominent fixture of MGS5's marketing. He said his time recording lines for Skullface was, quote, a maximum of a couple of hours, maybe an hour and a half, end quote, while adding that unlike Kiefer Sutherland, he only provided a voice for the character without any facial capture. Number 14, Hideo Kojima wanted the game to open with David Bowie's Diamond Dogs. Anyone who's played more than a few Metal Gear Solid games will have a sure awareness of Hideo Kojima's love of David Bowie, right down to the name of Venom Snake's new mercenary group Diamond Dogs, which was clearly named after Bowie's classic 1974 album of the same name. 
but Kojima wanted to take things even further by actually having the game open with the album's title track as Venom Snake wakes up. However, other members of the dev team weren't so fond of the idea, and despite being an undeniably self-indulgent gaming auteur, Kojima was apparently convinced by their protests. Number 13, Child Murder was cut before release. Later in the game, Snake ends up encountering an army of child soldiers, and to the outrage of some players, killing the kids results in an instant game over, forcing players to find non-lethal means of dealing with them. However, those who took a deep dive into the game's files found that child murder was originally permitted, albeit at massive cost to a player's heroism rating, which in turn would limit their FOB operations. Amid the mild outrage over this omitted feature, however, a fan-created mod was released for the PC version of the game, allowing players to freely slaughter kids to their hearts' deranged content. Maybe it was best that this wasn't included after all. Number 12. Quiet actress Stephanie Jusen hadn't seen her finished design before recording the part. The support character of Quiet is ultimately best remembered for the controversy revolving around her scantily clad appearance in the game, and also Hideo Kojima's hilariously unconvincing explanation for her immodest attire, that being, she breathes through her skin. But this all came as a surprise to Quiet's voice actress and mocap performer Stephanie Joosten as well, who hadn't seen a finished design for Quiet before she performed the part. She said of her reaction to Quiet's final look, quote, When I got to see her design, I was shocked too, but everyone didn't get to hear her story yet, so I can't understand people are angry about it or saying she is showing too much, but I am not bothered about it, end quote. Number 11. A playable Eli sequence was cut. Eli is a child soldier in the game who is not so surprisingly revealed to be a young liquid snake. And though it's well known that an epic confrontation with Eli was cut from the game's third chapter, a playable Eli sequence also got the chop at some point. Data mining uncovered text which pointed towards Eli being playable for at least a small portion of the game, whether directly controlled or as a support character, but for whatever reason, this sadly never came to pass. Considering how the game could have done much more with Eli, this is probably yet another casualty of the game's frantic development. Number 10. Quiet was originally supposed to be topless. Though there's no denying that Quiet is scantily clad in the final version of the Phantom Pain, her in-game look is practically modest compared to some of the more risque ideas Kojima had for the character. Early concept art reveals that Kojima considered the possibility of Quiet appearing topless in the game. While wearing only underwear, knee pads, and gun holsters, due to content concerns, this was reportedly changed during development so that the gun holster straps would cover Quiet's nipples, and further toned down to just a strapless bra. This isn't the first time Kojima has attempted to get a naked female character into an MGS game though, as originally the female bosses of MGS4 were all supposed to be in the nude as well. Number 9. Playing the game on your birthday activates a special surprise. Hideo Kojima has never been one to shy away from a detail-orientated easter egg, and in The Phantom Pain you might recall that the game asks you to enter your date of birth at the start. And so if you happen to be playing the game on your birthday, you'll be told to return to Mother Base immediately. Upon arriving, Snake arms himself as it appears the base is under attack, only to then be met with the most surprising sight, a birthday party complete with singing and cake. Number 8. The one-shot cutscenes are inspired by Alfred Hitchcock. Metal Gear Solid 5 may have featured disappointingly few cutscenes, but the cinematics on offer are nevertheless terrific, and differentiated from the previous Metal Gear Solid games through the lack of camera cuts. The majority of the cutscenes instead opt for a single smooth, unbroken take, creating a more immersive visual experience which ensures we as players are always there with Venom Snake. Kojima stated on Twitter that this was inspired by Alfred Hitchcock and his 1948 classic thriller Rope, which was filmed with several lengthy takes, which were then seamlessly joined together through clever editing. Number 7. Skullface was originally called Scarface. In an interview with Famitsu several years before the game's release, Kojima revealed that the villainous Skullface was nearly given the slightly different name of Scarface. Given that Kojima loves his on-the-nose cinematic references, it certainly would have been on-brand for him, even if for whatever reason he changed his mind and came up with something slightly more original. Thankfully, that restraint hasn't become a trend for Kojima, as Death Stranding saw him defer back to the more shamelessly silly movie-inspired monikers such as the preposterous Die Hardman. Number 6. Rations and the codec were cut during development. MGS5, for better or worse, toned down or outright ditched many of the series' more eccentric elements. 
For instance, Kojima decided to cut the health restoring rations and replace them with a regenerating health system, which proved particularly divisive while the expected codex screen was ditched in favour of a more conventional radio. But dummied content reveals the presence of a more typical codec in the game, bearing a fair similarity to the one from the spin-off Peace Walker, yet which was cut before release. In fact, it's a miracle the series' signature exclamation mark made it into the final game at all, because Kojima heavily considered removing it and focusing instead on realistic reactions from the AI enemies. Number 5. There are only 5.5 hours of cutscenes. One of the biggest complaints about MGS5 was the lack of lengthy cutscenes, and to that end the 40-50 to 50 hour main story contains only around 5.5 hours of cinematics, accounting for barely 10% of gameplay. Compare that to Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots, where almost half of its 20 hour playtime was comprised of extremely long and involved, and yes undeniably self-indulgent, cutscenes, including a 71 minute ending sequence. Thankfully, Kojima got back to his fully cinematic self with Death Stranding, which boasted an ending cutscene lasting just shy of two hours. The absolute madman. Number 4. The iDroid's voice was modelled after John Carpenter's movie Dark Star. Throughout the game, Venom Snake uses the iDroid to navigate the open world, and it also comes complete with an amusingly stilted female computer voice. As standard as the voice might sound, it was actually directly influenced by, yes, another movie, John Carpenter's 1974 sci-fi comedy Dark Star. In the film, the ship's computer, voiced by Barbara Cookie Knapp, adopts a similarly wooden yet oddly soothing voice, and so Kojima opted to provide a more subtle homage to it in MGS5. Given that Carpenter is himself a huge fan of the video games, and literally prevented Konami from being sued for styling Metal Gear Solid on Carpenter's own film Escape from New York, it's probably a nod he appreciates. Number 3. Enemy guard dogs were planned but never included. Kojima nearly leveled the playing field and then some by including enemy guard dogs in the game. An unused sound file in the game says, quote, It's a guard dog. Don't get too close. You wouldn't want it to start barking. The dog's sense of smell is better than ours, and so is their night vision. Don't take any chances. Kojima's original idea was for the dogs to have acute senses of sight, hearing, and smell, which would far exceed that of the human guards, requiring players to be extra vigilant. Better still, players who didn't shower frequently would find themselves literally sniffed out by the dogs, and so its inclusion would have actually made showering a vital aspect of the gameplay. Number 2. Konami removed references to Hideo Kojima from the box art. It's no secret at all that Hideo Kojima and Konami were on unpleasant terms throughout MGS5's production, with words suggesting that Konami was unhappy with the speed and cost of development. Things got fraught enough that, despite the game being developed by Kojima Productions, references to both the company and Kojima himself were removed from the box art due to their impending departure from Konami. Things got uglier at the 2015 Game Awards a few months after MGS5's release though, when Konami prevented Kojima from attending the show to collect his Industry Icon Award, resulting in the passing out being delayed until the next year. Number 1. A playable battle gear was removed due to balancing issues. Perhaps the coolest thing chopped from the game during development is the ability to operate Huey Emmerich's Metal Gear spin-off tech, Battle Gear. An unused audio clip sees Ocelot detailing Battle Gear's function, while making it abundantly clear that players would be able to use it for themselves. According to the Collector's Edition guide, players were originally allowed to take the tech out into the open world, but it was removed due to the balance issues it created. For a game that already makes players hyper-capable, that sure is saying something. So that's our list, what do you guys think down in the comments below? Did you know all of these facts about MGS5? And do you have an itching to go back and play it? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't thought I'd been Josh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.